welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons make sure you like and subscribe this video is a practical technique on how we would prepare an organic solid let's look at the five main stages to this practical technique then so the first section is the chemical reaction part we've then got how we would separate our crude product from the chemical mixture we would then look at how we'd purify our organic solid. We'd then test the purity of our solid. And then finally, we would do a percentage yield calculation. Let's look at each stage in detail then. So the chemical reaction stage, the first thing we would need to do would be to measure out our reactants, either by mass, if a reactant was a solid, or we would be measuring volume if the reactant was a liquid. Now, later on, when we do the percentage yield calculation, we will need the mass. So it's quite common to be given the density and therefore being able to calculate the mass because mass is density multiplied by volume. Most reactions would require heat. So usually we'd use a reflux and we'd set up in the apparatus shown here in the diagram. Anti-bumping granules are often used because what they do is they, they have smaller vapor bubbles will form within the mixture and it prevents that violent bubbling and larger bubbles that could cause the reactive mixture to jump up into the condensing uh, the condenser as you can see in the diagram water goes in at the bottom and out at the top so the the flow of water is always against gravity notice how the top of the tube is open that's correct we don't have a stopper and we don't have a thermometer here it's also very common for the heat source to either be a water bath or an electric heater. That's because quite often in organic chemistry, our reactants are flammable, so we don't want to use a naked flame. On occasions, you may need to, uh, you may be required to cool your reaction, in which case you would then use an ice bath. So the next stage then is for us to isolate our solid product. This would be called our crude product because it would be impure at this stage and it would be collected by filtration. So if the reaction forms a solid product, then we can just filter it straight away. In other cases, we might need to add cold water in order for our product, product to crystallize. We don't use gravity filtration, we would use reduced pressure filtration, which is using a Buckner funnel and a Buckner flask, and it's attached to a vacuum pump. This basically speeds up the rate of filtration. And our crude product would be collected on the filter paper in the Buckner funnel. So the next stage then is to take our crude solid and to purify it. And this process is called a recrystallization. It's exactly as it sounds. We're going to recrystallize it. So the first thing we're going to do, take our crude product and dissolve it in the minimum amount of hot solvent. And then we can remove any insoluble impurities via a hot filtration. Now, a hot filtration is exactly as it sounds. The glassware is hot to prevent our solvent from cooling because it must remain a hot solvent in order for our product to remain dissolved. So insoluble impurities are removed. What we would then do is take our filtrate and we would allow it to cool slowly. And as it cools, our solid crystals will form. And this will be our pure product. So we can then, finally, once we've allowed it to cool and the crystals have formed, we would collect our pure product doing another Buckner filtration. And at this point, we would wash the product with a small amount of cold solvent. And finally, we would take our pure product and we would dry it between filter papers and then possibly leave it in a warm oven to dry further. Next, then we're going to test the purity of our product. And this is done by checking the melting point. And how do we do this? Well, we do this by putting a small amount of product in a glass capillary tube and then inside a melting point machine, which basically just heats it up. And what we do is we observe the temperature at which it begins to melt and then the temperature at which it's all melted. And we call this the melting point range. Now, a pure substance will have an exact melting point. So we can, we can record how close we are to the actual melting point, but also the range at which it melts. So a pure substance will have a very narrow range, probably only within a couple of degrees. 
whereas an impure product might have a, a larger range and also the value will not be the textbook value for the melting point of that substance. So usually then the final step of any organic practical once you've isolated your pure organic product would be to record your mass of pure product and then we would carry out a percentage yield calculation. Now what I suggest we do before we start calculating moles is that we double check the stoichiometry in your reaction equation. Usually in organic reactions it's a one-to-one -one ratio of your reactant to your product. So what you're going to do is calculate the theoretical maximum mass via a molar calculation and make sure that you're using the moles of the limiting reactant and again usually in your questions it'll be quite obvious you'll be told which one's in excess so you're going to use the moles of your limiting. And again, as mentioned earlier, if you were using a liquid reactant, you're probably going to be given a volume and not a mass. However, you would be given the density and you can calculate the mass by density multiplied by volume. And then we can divide by the molecular mass to get our moles. Once you've got your moles of your reactant, you can then calculate the mass of your product and that would be your theoretical maximum mass. And to calculate percentage yield, we take the mass that we obtained in the practical divided by the maximum theoretical because the theoretical will always be bigger than our actual and then we multiply by 100 to turn that into a percentage and that's an overview of how we would carry out a practical to obtain a pure organic solid look out for the other videos on organic liquid and um, make sure you like and subscribe thanks very much